Okay, it would be live. Microphone, okay. Oh, hang on a second. I do not have my stream elements activity thing going. There we go. Okay, reconnected it. <clears throat> Everything's better now. <clears throat> yeah, I want to keep that activity fee going so I know been following and whatnot in case I don't see it in chat. Sure, let's go with that. Maybe they get like super talkative all at once, you know, just to be different. And I miss who actually followed and whatnot. Anyway, we're working on Drawn and Linvala again. Took my day off that I said I was going to take off, although it turned out to be for Quina's event and not for... Well, I did finally kill Hell House, although I did not full clear the event properly, so I'll have to go and redo that at some point, but... <clears throat> the important thing is I actually defeated the stupid thing because Quina came out, and I have Quina's full kit now. <clears throat> and Quina's amazing. Big old frog eating monster person with giant tongue. Basically, basically extra weird Kirby, <coughs> which is saying an awful lot. <laughs> uh, yep, still snuffly, and you know, it's not like it's original for me to be hacking and coughing right at the start of the stream, but the fact that it's still part of the thing I had two weeks ago is. Kind of ridiculous. Picking pneumonia. Anyway, we're on sets that start with R, so of course that means all of the Ravnica sets, so... First up is Ravnica Allegiance. Alphabetically. So, let's see what we can find... Yeah, probably not. Don't need to give all my stuff exalted in any way. Uh, not running gates. <clears throat> no, no. Cards we can't run. Uh, each opponent discards a card and I gain three life. Nope. Brand, Blood Mist Infiltrator. <clears throat> no, no. More nose. Uh, exile target card from a graveyard, draw a card, and target player sacrifices a creature with the greatest power among creatures they control, and you gain life equal to the power. Nope. No. No. <clears throat> Those. So, two things are going against Ethereal Absolution. The first biggest one is that if our other cards are working properly, our opponents will not have cards in the graveyard for us to exile in the first place. <clears throat> the other thing is that it's just a weaker Elish Norn for one less mana in enchantment form, which is okay. <clears throat> but not amazing. So probably not. Thank you, Planes Walkers. You control unless the controller pays two for each of those creatures, and that is an ETB effect, so we're already trying to shut that down with our own stuff. <clears throat> uh, no to Grasping Thrall. No, no. No. Think so. No to Kaya. No to a Wrath. No. Nope. <clears throat> Death Touch, Death Touch with Aftermath, or Afterlife, rather. 
<coughs> Don't need the locket for the racketeers. Um, no spirit. No, no. Also no. Uh, double your life total. Target opponent loses half their life. Return target creature card with mana value three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Nope. <clears throat> uh, gains vigilance, gains death touch, has afterlife two. No, it was just a stupid stats monster at the time. Mothering tithe. Yeah, I think we're putting enough pressure on our opponents. Especially their mana, that Smothering Tithe is actually a thing I might want. <clears throat> there we go. That Ravnica. It is four mana, right? Yeah. Oh wow, look, another Smothering Tithe deck that will actually run Smothering Tithe. I know, but still, most of the time I do not bother such cards. But when they're the right card for the deck, kind of hard not to. The Haunt, Ortesa. I don't think Tithe Taker is particularly good. I'd rather just not let our opponents cast spells during our turn if we're going to do that. <coughs> and I don't think we want any of these other cards. All right. So that was Ravnica Allegiance. On to Ravnica City of Guilds, then return to Ravnica. <coughs> and so on in that fashion. <coughs> Maybe by the time we're done with the Ravnica sets, I'll have cleared my throat out enough that I stop with all of this, but I wouldn't count on it. Seems unlikely. Uh, search your library for an R card. No. 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 We have a lot of cards that make it difficult for the opponent to attack us. I don't know that we straight up need a 9-drop Archon, though. Like, it's okay. <clears throat> uh, Bottle Cloister, no. King Life, no. Curio, Concerted Effort. Evoke creatures, evoke spell. <coughs> <coughs> um, no to Bob. The well, Bob does get around our anti card drawing cards. It is a bit too dangerous though without something like Sensei's Top. Keep him in check. Deals half that damage rounded down to that player permanent instead. No, I don't think so. Don't need Helldozer. X Power of Reckoning. <coughs> Uh, I'm not dealing damage to my own stuff, so no to Light of Sanctions. Mm. Very similar Moonlight Bargain would let us get a bunch of cards into hand by paying some life. I think I run too many non-creatures for Nullstone Gargoyle. Go to that one. These, because of color identity issues. Don't think those. 
Think Weed Imp. Uh, activate abilities cost two more to activate unless they're mana abilities. Maybe? I have to go back and see how many activated abilities we have, but Suppression Field definitely works on a bunch of infinite combos in Commander, where the opponent was counting on either generating enough mana to be able to keep activating it over and over again. Um, things like the... Um, oh god, what's the hell? Nim Death Mantle plus Ashnod's Altar with creature token generators. Um, or things like, um, Kiki Jiki plus, you know, any of the things that combo with him, Exarch, um, Zealous Conscripts. A lot of that is also stopped by our stopping comes into play abilities, but sometimes it's not the comes into play effect that's letting you go infinite, it's the activated ability itself looping with another activated ability, so... In that regard, suppression field can work. Or if I just don't happen to have any of the ways to stop comes into play abilities from triggering, <clears throat> making it actually cost mana to do the thing might actually stop it from going infinite properly in any meaningful way. I just have to check and see how many actual activated abilities we're going to have. That way I don't lock our stuff out of the game. Well, it can't be blocked by saplings. Nope. <clears throat> Woebringer Demon and Wojek Siren. Nope. Okay. Onward to Return to Ravnica. And Rise of the Eldrazi. Uh, I don't need Angel. <clears throat> also, it comes into play ability. Yeah, my first thought is I don't need that card. My second thought is even if I needed that card, that card does not interact with the things that I'm running, so probably best to just ignore it anyway. This guy, Fencing Ace, Grave Betrayal, Launch party, martial law, agent no, pack rat no, recent captain no, rest in peace. Well, if we wanted a third graveyard hate card. I don't think we need a third one, though. Also, unlike the other two, this one actually does affect our cards. So, yeah, I guess we can pass on Rest in Peace. We have the Dothy Voidwalker and Leyline of the Void, so... Those two should be sufficient for what we need. I don't know that we need actual Sphere of Safety. Like, I don't expect this to be more than a, like, um, what's its name? Uh, Ghostly Prison, but for, like, three? Because if we get too many enchantments out and we're not already winning the game, then we're just at risk for getting all of our enchantments blown up and it not actually accomplishing what we wanted it to, so... <clears throat> Sweeper, Swift Justice. Worm, 
Thrill Kill Assassin. No. All of these. And Locust. Okay. That was Return to Ravnica. On to Rise of the Eldrazi. <clears throat> <clears throat> No, 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 artisan, <clears throat> baleful omen, I think we're running potentially too many creatures that kills, the problem is I can't remember all of them, but yeah, I think we have a bunch of hate bears, so consume the meek would just wind up obliterating all of them. Can't have that. No, plus zero, plus four, ten, ten, trample, annihilate two. <clears throat> Emrakul's band. Mm, don't think we need Gideon. Gideon does have the upside with all of our things that are locking down creatures of just being able to occasionally kill a creature like every other turn if he needs to also because he's not a creature he would untap normally on our turn and then be able to attack again we might be running um what's its name though the uh sun immortal sun because we're not running a ton of Planeswalkers, and one of the ones I most want to run is Karn for his static, so. <clears throat> At that point, it doesn't super matter. <laughs> I guess we can put him on the list anyway, and maybe run him. So. Is. Rise. Or, uh, Wait, Planeswalker. He starts at like five. Been a while. Starts at six. Good for him. <laughs> uh, don't need Galdra's Assassin. No. Source would deal damage to you or creature you control, prevent one of that. <clears throat> but that doesn't kick in until. Or no, is that. Ah, but it does need one level. So yeah, it doesn't kick in until you level it up once. And then you need to get to level five to prevent two damage. <clears throat> yeah. Think we can do better. Mm, don't need Vindicator, Spirit Dancer. Yeah, I don't think we need regular Linvala over our commander Linvala. <clears throat> like, that seems unnecessary. Don't need near-death experience. Nirkana Revenant, no. Assembly. Men, puncturing light. No, uh, no, nope. Uh, no, no. 
Nope. <clears throat> no. Wall of Omens. Nope. Okay. So nothing else fun there. Rise. Next up is Rivals. And apparently, Saviors of Kamigawa. No, the Arch, Arterial Flow, can't run that one. White, black one exiles creatures, right? From the flip into a land cards. Captain's Hook, Champion of Dusk, Dead Man's Chest. Uh, whenever another creature dies, put a 1-1 one -one counter on her. When she dies, create X-1-1s one -ones with lifelink. <clears throat> Except our opponent's creatures are never dying if we're doing things right. They're just getting exiled instead, so... Uh, gleaming Barrier, Golden Demise, Golden Guardian, uh, Backer Block, Masterminds Acquisition, Moments, Yeah, there is profane procession. So yeah, we probably don't need that one since it can only exile three at max. <clears throat> I mean, technically, it can exile more, but you have to activate the ability with the third one about to go on the stack in order to get more than three creatures exiled with it <clears throat> before it's forcibly transformed into the other side. Squire's Devotion, Sun Sentinel, Petsamok. Okay, so Rivals. We want to consider the Immortal Sun. Oops. Okay. For a second there, I thought we did not capitalize Immortal. There we go. The Immortal Sun. Uh, Tomb Robber. Draw Tyrant. Twilight Prophet. We could technically run Twilight Prophet. I've said this before. I've seen this thing trigger exactly once. <clears throat> like, it always feels like this thing shows up and dies before you ever get to your upkeep with 10 permanents in play. But maybe... Vampire Cleric. Or... Yeah. Hmm. 
Bonus hunger. No. No to Planeswalker deck Vraska. Don't need the Tulpa for anything. Okay. Rivals. The rivals come saviors. Scars of Mirrodin. Nope. Wakuda. I uh, don't care about Ashes of the Fallen. Uh, Spirit or Arcane spell, destroy all permanents with the same mana value. Nope. I think we want choice of damnations for anything. Ebony uh, Owl. <clears throat> there was some temptation for running a card like Ebony Owl with um, uh, Winter Orb and whatnot. Just as a way to kill the opponents, but... I think we'll be fine finding other ways to slowly tear them apart. We could run Kataki. It's a little dangerous with the Winter Orb. Like, I don't want to have to sacrifice the Orb on my turn. And let everybody else untap, or like like either the Winter Orb or the Static Orb effect. We do have some other constant artifacts, because we can't really run the ones with activated. Yeah, maybe not then. That seems like it's going to be more trouble than it's worth to try and... Kill our opponent's artifacts that way. on Aga maybe Michiko Be a human advisor? Yeah. It's not the correct casting cost. So yeah, we already have the karmic, um, karmic justice and martyrs bond. So if we include Michiko, also <clears throat> every time our opponents do anything to us, they'll wind up losing permanence. <clears throat> Which, if we're constricting enough of what they're doing, they won't be able to just keep adding. They won't be able to just keep adding new ones. That sentence still sounded weird. Like, like I don't know why I want it to be add, not adding, but either way. Um, so, so, close, and we're done. Yeah, for some reason that whole sentence structure sounded weird when I was saying it, and I tried to correct it, and it's like, no, I think that's actually what it is. It just didn't quite feel right. All right, moving on to Scars of Mirrodin. 
But yeah, Michiko and the other cards just to keep them from being able to keep permanence in play combined with the other cards, you know, stopping them from putting more permanence into play effectively. <clears throat> it's just another motivation for them to attack elsewhere if they're going to bother attacking at all. <clears throat> hmm. I am out of beverage already. No, no. In fact, artifacts, demon, proliferate stuff, corpse cur, calling dais. Sanguinate for this deck. Death for anything. Ooh. 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 Kemba, Forge Master, Arbiter. Yeah, we probably want Leon and Arbiter. That seems like thing that we are doing. Right, Cat Cleric, Cat Cleric. <clears throat> That is the one that affects us, so we would also have to be able to pay two to search our deck, but most of the time we're going to have control over if we're searching or not, so. Spellbomb, Death Mantle. I think we need the Empyrean at all. <clears throat> Hatchet Bomb, Dr. Hippogriff, Distance, no. Sunblast Angel a little bit tempting, since all of our opponent's stuff will be tapped, much like the uh, portal card. <clears throat> or it'll just be able to kill everything. Actually, does the Angel have Vigilance? No. Okay. I was going to say, I think the portal card might also be a six drop, in which case I might be down for the Angel, but it's going to get self locked down. Under most of the things that we have anyway, then maybe not. I suppose it only gets locked down underneath um, actual Meek Stone. <clears throat> uh, that's a thing, too. I've got a bunch of the give opponents creatures, like, negative power effects. That would let them untap with Meek Stone in play. Or the other one, the Crackdown from Mercadian Masks. Roll. Conditioning. Fall to the Grave. Sumptive Goo. 
Probably interested in Decree of Pain. Oops. That. Surge. Decree of Pain. Uh, exile all permanents for as long as those cards remain exiled. <coughs> nah, I don't think so. How many clerics do we have? Is Edgewalker actually good? Currently have 10 clerics. Leon and Arbiter. Chaos. Twilight Prophet. Grand Abolisher, Garfield Mystic, Sanctum Prelate. The Archivist we're probably cutting. Uh, White Plume Adventurer is actually a Cleric. Containment Priest, Alms Collector. Leonin Arbiter, not Lenin Arbiter. Um, doesn't seem like we have quite enough. <clears throat> to merit the edge walker <clears> hmm <throat> <clears throat> I saw a force bubble and I was thinking solemnity, but I don't think that works. Like, I don't think you can apply the replacement effect because you literally cannot put the counters on things. So you can't replace it with putting counters on it and then not have counters go on it, I don't think. <clears throat> I am genuinely blanking if that's a thing or not. Damage would be dealt to you put de that many depletion counters on force bubble instead. I think I think this falls into the category of because you literally can't do it, you can't replace the effect with another thing. But I could be wrong about that and it could actually work out the way you want it to where it's like, okay, I would take damage. So I wonder if force bubble itself has a random thing on it. You control more than one each time you take damage you side, which one replaces the damage, and that one replaces all of the damage. Uh, if you take six damage at once, it will replace all six damage and put six counters, and the second ability will trigger. The effect does not prevent damage, it replaces it, so the damage is neither dealt n is neither dealt or prevented, it should be nor prevented. Hmm. I forget how that works with cards like that. If you can choose to have the replacement effect happen, but then it can't get the counters, or if you can't choose the replacement effect because you can't put counters on it. This is one of those things you think I'd be able to remember after all this time playing Magic, but... Genuinely cannot remember. I don't think it would be under Solemnity either. If we go back and we look at Solemnity. Solemnity stops counters from being put on our fed, enters the battlefield as well as stopping counters from being put on them later. Or an additional cost of a spell requires putting counters on, it can't be paid. If a resolving spell or ability says that player may put counters on those objects, that player can't choose to. Allows players to modify or replace an event by putting counters on an artifact creature, enchantment, or land. That player may apply the replacement effect. Counters won't be put on the object. But if the original event is entirely replaced, such as applying Soul Scar Mage's replacement effect, the original event won't happen. <clears throat> okay, so it does work that way. You would be uh, immune to damage while Force Bubble and Solemnity are both in play. 
I'm not even 100% sure we're running Solemnity yet, but maybe. And if we do, I guess I would be down for Force Bubble 2 then. How much is this? Four mana? Final Punishment. I think I need Gilded Light. Hmm. Is this a Lethal Vapors deck? The only other Lethal Vapors deck I have is my Five Color Super Friends, because it only runs like five creatures anyway. <clears throat> I wonder if this is a Lethal Vapors deck, though. I do like the card a lot. This is one of those things where... Somebody will eventually blow it up and skip their turn. But in the meantime, or they will actually have enchantment removal, but players will usually wait and see if somebody gets enchantment removal and wants to kill Lethal Vapors with it. <clears throat> so that can buy some amount of time. Also very good when all of the creatures are that you need are already in play, and it just stops new ones from coming down. So I'll target enchantment and cycling three. Nope. Scourge. Secret layers. Shadowmore. Alright, Shadowmore, what did you have that restricted what opponents could and could not do? We'll probably want the Soul Cauldron, because we already have Micaeus, and if we're going to run Solemnity, that just makes for an even more useful combination, which then in turn makes a card, cards like the other thing more valuable. <clears throat> No. <clears throat> Notably, this is one of the things where this is a cost to untap it, so it does not actually work with the Solemnity, so. Would work with the um, Vizier, but. Oh, yeah, Cauldron of Souls, that is the. I was referring to Cauldron of Souls, 5-drop artifact. It also just combos very well with Micaeus. Like, not only can it save Micaeus the first time he gets killed by a Wrath, but it can also be used to save all the creatures Micaeus saved the first time. Like, if he bring, or, you know, if you save Micaeus by putting a minus one, minus one counter on him, you can bring them all back with minus one, minus one counters instead. And then Micaeus will save them again and bring them back stronger. You know, however you want to attempt to set that up. I think it's slightly better to put the minus one, minus one counters on all the dying creatures. Because then Micaeus has to die by himself first. In order to not save all of your creatures again, but... There's also an argument to be made for making all your guys stronger and hoping that the, and just saving Micaeus himself with the cauldron and hoping you get to save your creatures with the cauldron again and then Micaeus again <clears throat> somewhere down the line or at least save all your creatures with the cauldron and now they're weaker but you have them stronger for a little while <clears throat> All of these Moonland, Snarled Effigy.
I think we need Aramancy. Light. Kill Dare. Last Breath. We didn't take from Mercadian Mass, so. Mass Calcify. Midnight Banshee. <coughs> Probably don't need the Order of White Clay. Can't run Painter Servant. Herman, no. Gear Click. Choose a card name. You have protection from the chosen card name. Hmm. All right, it's not amazing compared to some of the other cards that let us shut down specific cards. I think we need Shepherd. Don't think we need Wound Action. Okay, Shadow Moor. I'm assuming the other one says remastered afterwards, <clears throat> and we just can't see it. <clears throat> Dies, it becomes the curse. Mm. <clears throat> we might want always watching. Like, we already had uh, Brave the Sands as our mass um, vigilance card, but maybe always watching. Thought I corrected that. Oh well. Okay. Yeah, the plus one plus one doesn't matter if our creatures have vigilance and therefore aren't tapping to do anything to begin with. It is a little bit bad with Drana and Linvala because they are base three power. So they will naturally untap <clears throat> with, um, what's its name, uh, with Meek Stone in play. Almost definitely one Anguished Unmaking. Light Black Instant. For the same reason we want cards like Utter End. <clears throat> uh, can't run Archangel Avison. Bloodline. No. Creeping Dread. Um, we could run Declaration in Stone. It's not great that it's a sorcery, but it does exile the creature. It's good for getting rid of large numbers of tokens with the same name, since it doesn't let them investigate. And we do have a handful of cards that punish the opponent for extra draws, so it's not like giving them a clue token <clears throat> is particularly harmful for us. So, between all of that...
don't think I need Eerie Interlude. It is good anti-wrath protection since we're not running a lot of tokens. Like, it just lets all of our stuff live, but so does most of the other stuff. It does get around exiling and, um, like, things like Terminus, putting them on the bottom of the deck. Maybe? Maybe I should consider it then? I'd be a lot more inclined towards it if it let me exile non-land permanents. So that way I could, like, letting it exile lands would be a problem because then you could tap the lands for mana, cast it, cast your other spells, then have all your lands untap. And as we've proven with cards like uh, Wilderness Reclamation, suddenly having all of your lands untap again during your untap step, kind of problematic. <clears throat> or untap step during your end step can be kind of problematic, so... Doesn't allow for quite the same shenanigans, because you can't float the mana and then untap it and cast all of your spells that way, but close enough, you can get double your mana's worth. But if it let us exile our enchantments until end of turn, I'd rather have somebody get out from underneath them for a moment than uh, have them go away permanently. But we have to settle for just um, things like Teferi's Protection to save our stuff then in that way. <clears throat> I don't think we need floorboards or spoon. No. Yeah, I don't think we needed a Cursed Witch. I could not remember exactly what her curse did. I knew it was a drain effect, but I forgot the spells targeting them cost one less, which is, you know, part of her effect also, is that spells targeting her cost two less or something. To make it easier for her to die. Or pile up enchantments onto her, you know, whichever one you're feeling. <clears throat> I uh, don't need Audric. Open the armory. Ice of Angel, no. Keeper, Restless Dead. Uh, skeleton new, no. sinister concoction new. No. You know, the top card of your library, put that card in your hand. Each opponent loses life equal to its mana value. Deal X damage, gain X life. <clears throat> and create a number of 1-1s one equal to the highest life total among all players. He is a 6 drop, but his plus gets around all of our anti hard draw effects. So that's a little bit tempting. We could also very easily get into a position where Soren is not vulnerable because of all the different things stopping opponents from attacking us. <clears throat> Although not all of them work for our Planeswalkers. So... Like any of the ones printed before Planeswalkers were a thing or that don't specify Planeswalkers on them for whatever reason don't get the bonus, like don't get the penalty and they can attack Soren freely, but with all of our other lockdown cards, maybe that's still good enough. <clears throat> I guess we'll consider him. Soren Grim Nemesis. Four white, black, Queen's Walker, six loyalty. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, we're almost at the hour mark, and I still haven't stopped choking to death. Uh, Tam Tam's journal, new. Acidity. 
Raven Inspector. Westvale Abbey. Yeah, okay. That was Shadows. Mm, then Shards of the Wild. That'll put us past the hour mark, so. Yeah, I don't think we want ad nauseum. No song, no. A man, sir. Carol. Original Elspeth. <clears throat> Probably don't need him. White Orchid. <clears throat> uh, Night Captain, no. Yeah, Lich's Mirror is just too weird and janky. <clears throat> If we could control what phased out with Teferi's protection, it would be amazing, the combo. Like, oh no, we're about to die. Phase out everything except for Lich's Mirror and <clears throat> uh, take lethal damage. Shuffle all of our non-existent permanents right now into our deck. Go to 20, draw 7, and then have all of our stuff come back afterwards, but... I'm sure there's some convoluted ways you can almost do that, probably involving, like, Oblivion Ring effects. Where you hide your own stuff underneath it and then just wait to die, but having to be so proactive about it, setting it up, and then the Lich's Mirror dies or something, and you're just like, oh, well, guess I'll just lose then. <clears throat> I exiled all of my stuff for nothing. Yeah, we're not doing any of the other stupid fiend tricks, so... Also, there comes into play abilities anyway, so... Probably not gonna work. Ah, huh. right, shards. Alright, real quick then. Shards is a multicolored set, so there were less cards to go through. So real quick, we're gonna do the starter... That and that'll put us right at the hour mark because I don't think we care about like cream of acid or anything, but we'll check. <clears throat> we will check and see. Yeah, I don't need a oh, excuse me, Angel of Light, mm, Prince, Champion Lancer. Backmore Ghoul, no. Backmore Lancer. Portal Second Age cards. Definitely don't need a Devout Monk. I appreciate his enthusiasm, but... Yeah, I don't think we need Grim Tutor. This does not seem like a Grim Tutor deck. Loyal Sentry, no. Path of Peace. Oh, that's true. This one gains us two life for each creature destroyed. So it is the same casting cost as the Angel, but... <clears throat> Don't need Royal Trooper. 
Oh, Shrieking Spectre is unique to Portal as a 7-mana 2-2 flyer that makes... Eh, it makes the player discard when it attacks, so it doesn't even have to deal combat damage necessarily. Uh, there's Stream of Acid, and we don't need it. <clears throat> Veteran Cavalier. Yep, okay, cool. So yeah, that will do it for this particular session as we just barely cross the hour mark. Um, give me a few minutes. I'll come back. We'll do a second one. See how much more we can get through, but I need to get some water. So I will see you back shortly. And if not, I will see you next time and have a good rest of your day. Thanks for watching.